The first ship to have a full-length flat deck was HMS Argus, the conversion of which was completed in September 1918. The first purpose-designed aircraft carrier to be laid down was the HMS Hermes in 1918. Japan began work on the Hosho the following year. In December 1922, Hosho became the first to be commissioned, while Hermes was commissioned in February 1924. For more than a hundred years, the United States have been the top in developing aircraft carriers. So therefore, we will focus only on the evolution of United States aircraft carriers. Let's start off with USS Langley CV-1. USS Langley was the United States Navy's first aircraft carrier and also the US Navy's first turboelectric-powered ship. The USS Langley was also the smallest aircraft carrier of the US, stretching only up to 542 feet with 468 personal capacity and could accommodate only 36 aircraft. The main innovation about USS Langley was the introduction of a turboelectric transmission, which uses electric generators to convert the mechanical energy of a turbine, that is steam or gas into electric energy, and electric motors to convert it back into mechanical energy to power the driver shafts. Number 2 is USS Lexington CV-2. USS Lexington was originally designed as a battle cruiser, and she was converted into one of the Navy's first aircraft carriers during construction to comply with the terms of the Washington Naval Treaty of 1922, which essentially terminated all new battleship and battle cruiser construction. The first remarkable revolution is that USS Lexington was the first to introduce bulbous bow into an aircraft carrier, and the bolt modifies the water flows around the hull, reducing drag and thus increasing speed, range, fuel efficiency, and stability. Number 3 is USS Ranger CV-4 the USS Ranger was an interwar United States Navy's aircraft carrier, the only ship of its class. As a treaty ship, Ranger was the first US vessel to be designed and built from the keel up as a carrier. She was relatively small, just 730 feet long and under 15,000 tons. As we've mentioned, the keel was first introduced in USS Ranger. The keel is basically a flat blade sticking down into the water from a sailboat's bottom. It also has two functions. It prevents the boat from being blown sideways by the wind and it holds the ballast that keeps the boat right side up. Number 4 is USS Yorktown CV-5 the Yorktown class was a class of three aircraft carriers built for the United States Navy's and completed shortly before the World War II, the Yorktown CV-5, Enterprise CV-6, and Hornet CV-8. The hydraulic catapult system was first introduced in this aircraft. As aircraft catapult is a device used to allow aircraft to take off from a very limited amount of space, such as the deck, as the deck of a vessel, but also install land-based runways in rare cases. It is now most commonly used on aircraft carriers as a form of assisted takeoff. Number 5 is USS Essex CV-9. The Essex was a class of aircraft carriers of the United States Navy. The 20th century's most numerous class of capital ship, the class consisted of 24 vessels, which came in short hull and long hull versions. It stretched up to 872 feet and displacement about 30,800 tons. It could also accommodate 2,919 personnel and between 90 to 100 aircraft. The main innovation of the Essex-class aircraft carrier was the first use of angled flight deck. This enabled multiple planes to land and take off faster and at the same Number 6 is USS Midway CV-41. The lead ship of her class commissioned a week after the end of the World War II, Midway was the largest ship in the world until 1955, as well as the first US aircraft carrier too big to enter the Panama Canal. She operated for 47 years, during which time she saw action in the Vietnam War. The introduction of armored flight deck was first seen in this aircraft carrier. The flight deck of an aircraft carrier is the surface from which its aircraft take off and land, essentially a miniature airfield at sea. An armored flight deck is simply an aircraft carrier flight deck that incorporates substantial armor. Number 7 is USS Forrestal CV-59. It was commissioned in 1955 and she was the United States' first completed supercarrier and was the lead ship of her class. Forrestal and her class were conventionally powered. Supercarrier is an unofficial descriptive term for the largest type of aircraft carrier, usually displacing over 65,000 long tons. 
The U.S. Navy currently has 10 such ships. In comparison, a few countries operate what are by today's standards medium carriers of around 40 to 1,000 tons, such as the French aircraft carrier Charles de Gaulle. USS Forrestal CV-59 is the first aircraft carrier to cross a displacement of 60,000 tons. Its length is 990 feet long, accommodation of over 4,000 personnel, and can carry up to 90 aircraft. Number 8 is the USS Enterprise CVN-65. The USS Enterprise is a decommissioned United States Navy aircraft carrier. She was the first nuclear-powered aircraft carrier and the eighth United States naval vessel to bear the name. Like her predecessor of World War II fame, she is nicknamed the Big E. At 1,123 feet long, she is the longest naval vessel ever built. Her 93,284 long-ton displacement ranks her at the 12th heaviest carrier after the 10 carriers of the Nimitz class and USS Gerald R. Ford. Enterprise had a crew of some 4,600 service members. It can hold up to 90 aircraft on board. The best thing about nuclear-powered aircraft carriers is that their operational range is unlimited. They can go for an unlimited distance up to 25 years. Number 9 is USS Nimitz CVN-68. The Nimitz class is a class of 10 nuclear-powered ships and one of the largest warships built. Instead of the gas turbines or diesel-electric systems used for propulsion on many modern warships, the carriers use two A4W pressurized water reactors which drive four propeller shafts and can produce a maximum speed of over 30 knots and maximum power of around 260,000 shaft horsepower. The cattle bar system, meaning catapult assisted takeoff but arrested recovery, or catapult assisted takeoff barrier arrested recovery, was first introduced in Nimitz class. It is a system used for the launch and recovery of aircraft from the deck of an aircraft carrier, combining elements of short takeoff and vertical landing, aka STOVL, with catapult assisted takeoff but arrested recovery. And finally, we come to the last one, the Gerald R4 class, a class of nuclear-powered aircraft carriers currently being constructed for the United States Navy. The class with a planned total of 10 ships will replace the Navy's current carriers on a one-for-one -one basis, starting with the lead ship Gerald R4 replacing Enterprise CVN-65 and then eventually taking the place of the existing Nimitz-class carriers. The notable innovation about the USS Gerald R. Ford is that it can accommodate 25% more sorties than the Nimitz class, meaning it can issue more sudden troops or planes from a defensive position against the enemy. And with that, we're winding up the video for today, but don't forget to check out our other videos and stay tuned for more videos from the Buzz. Thank you guys for viewing and bye-bye.